we are going to see an inevitable rise in climate migration. We need to face up to the fact that people are going to come from the global south to seek safety in the relatively wealthy and, and safer global north. We're going to see that whether we like it or not. We can close our eyes to it, but we can't ignore it. It's going to happen. So we can either choose to have a management plan in place so that it is not painful, but also that it is to our mutual benefit. So climate has always played a really important role in where humans live and where they move to. Climate migration is already underway. It's inevitable to a certain extent. We don't know how great, we don't know the scale of this or, um, or the time scale under which um, people will move. If you look at uh, the models for it, it varies between you know, hundreds of millions to one and a half billion by 2050. Either way, it's an extreme number of people that are going to have to move. We absolutely need to manage this in a pragmatic way. Humans are just another African ape. We evolved in Africa, but we don't live there anymore. We are globally dispersed, and we did that through migration, and it really is migration that made us. Through our ice ages, as the ice has expanded, humans have retreated. Through periods of global warming, as the ice has retreated, humans have expanded. And really, the climate has driven huge adaptations by humans. We have expanded our population over the planet, adapting to different environments, uh, changing our food sources, changing the crops that we grow, changing the types of buildings uh, that we inhabit. What we're experiencing now is a very different sort of climate change. It's much faster and it's much more extreme than anything we've had in our history. And it's coming at a time when we are no longer you know, a small species of a, a few thousand Homo sapiens dispersed as hunter-gatherers across the planet. We are now eight billion strong, living in a globally connected world, living in human systems that are really vulnerable to the slightest change uh, in climate. It affects our infrastructure, it affects our food systems, it affects our health. So, what it means is we've got to become much more savvy and much more cooperative with how we respond to this. So we're going to see people not just moving within borders, but across borders, and not just across borders, but across continents. So we are going to see a shifting and a shrinking of the climate niche, the human climate niche, further north. We've already seen it for many other species. We're going to start seeing it for humans. Um, this is inevitable. The, the numbers and the scale are not inevitable. We can reduce those, but we are nevertheless going to see large numbers of people moving. The only way that we can make this work is by addressing it globally. We need pragmatic solutions. We need a United Nations body that is going to oversee a planetary movement on a scale that we have not experienced before. We're talking hundreds of millions of people moving over the coming decades. It can feel very much like this is impossible, that to even talk about a global system of governance is utopian. I mean, I would say we already have something similar uh, for climate change. You know, we really have as much as you can deride it, and it is, you know, there are many reasons to criticise it. The COP process for climate, um, for climate change, the Conference of the Parties, is doing something really quite incredible, I think. You know, this is a, a table in which every country, from tiny Toga to the great big United States to China, Every country has a leader sitting at that table, negotiating. And through that, we have decided as a global species, as a global community, to limit the emissions of an invisible gas which increases our well-being, increases our economy, you know, on the basis that in the future, our world will be unlivable. 
We are waking up to this climate crisis wherever we live now. It's not just an issue in some poor faraway country. It is an issue in your own city, wherever you live now. We're going to have to find a way to make this work because the alternative is conflict, not just between a couple of countries, but global conflict. And I don't think any of us needs that on top of the climate crisis that we're facing.